Loy at one and three for Wasps, but there you've got Andy Le Chevalier and um, and Elliot Webb. Yeah, all new names really. I mean, obviously Chevalier played down at Swansea, I think, but uh, yeah, Will Green and Malloy's on the bench. So whether this is, whether these guys are in on form or because of injury, I'm uh, a little but unsure. Darren Morris. Garen Jenkins, Ben Evans, outstanding for. Well, I mean that's that's Swansea Park overall. I mean this, the, the front row is uh, as, as strong as anything you'll you'll find. And again, Andy Moore's back in the second row with Tyro Morlin. And uh, one guy in the back row who's playing particularly well, who uh, who came from Clarity, is Howell Jenkins. Mm. I mean he's now yeah. he's always been a very skillful player. It's been his temperament and his dip, discipline that's let him down. Yeah. But I mean he's really found his feet. He's been given the opportunity by Swansea, and he's uh, he's come of age. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Howell Jenkins. You know he's really tough player and. Mm. Uh, like Ron, his discipline maybe has, has let him down. So um, I just feel that uh, it's a great balance. You know, as you know, the balance in the in the back row is important. And I think you know he just really, really solid. He got Grant Lewis, the foot pulling, you mm. know, ability, and, and Char was dynamic. You mentioned discipline. It is so important. Mm. I mean, we have incidents from from yesterday at, uh, at Gloucester and Ethling. We'll we'll return to that. They're worth yeah. waiting for. It's it's very interesting what happened at Kingston. Yeah. But uh, again. Swansea's performance, how they hold themselves together up front will be very important and of course Scott Gibbs big is game. the captain today, big game. He wants to go on the Lions tour and uh, this is a huge game. Rob Henderson is back, the Irish centre, he's been playing well so it's going to be a very interesting afternoon. OK, Swansea at Loftus Road, we can now join match commentators as usual, JJ Williams and Hugh Llewellyn Davis. Thank you Eddie, it's a glorious sunny afternoon, it's very cold in West London. And Swansea arrive on the crest of a wave. They've won their last 14 matches. Their only side left in the tournament, still boasting a 100% record. But Scott Gibbs and his team know the two toughest tests are yet to come. Here today, and then even bigger, away a tournament favourite start from, say, next weekend. What? Already know they can't qualify. That is their side. They've had problems in the front row. First choice props Darren Malloy and Will Green are both out. So Le Chevalier and Elliot Webb are called in. Flank forward Paul Volley also injured. Richard Burkett coming in at number six. But they've still got three Lions in the pack. Sean Reid and the skipper Lawrence Delalio. Behind Irish international Rob Henderson returns at centre. After six weeks out injured, Paul Sampson takes over from the injured Josh Lusey at full-back. Swansea of 13 of the team that destroyed the Wasps at St Helens. The two changes, Steve Wynn in for the still injured Mark Taylor at centre. And the Tongan, Sinilo Martens, preferred to Rodri Jones at scrum half. This Swansea pack, though, considered by many to be the most powerful and well-balanced in the whole tournament. The referee, Claudio Giacomel of Italy, it is an Italian team in charge. He comes from Venice. And a big responsibility. So it's Arwell Thomas with a trademark up and under from the middle to start the game. And immediately Swansea on the offensive. Arwell Thomas spinning it out to Matthew Robinson. The tournament's leading try scorer with eight, and four of those came in the home victory, a resounding 50 points, 54-28 for Swansea at St Helens against the Wasps. Not much in it up front, just a little advantage for Swansea, just about a pound or two a man, and uh, that reflected as well in the weight of the front five, so nothing significant in this forward battle. The cult hero at the Wasps is the man in the middle there, Trevor Liotta. The Samo and at hooker. Stay, stay. Okay, put the ball, put the ball. Delalio controlling at number eight. Play the ball, play the ball. And the scrum half, Martin Wood, the test, Kevin Morgan at full back, but for the All Whites, he's taken it well, under pressure from Shane Royzer. On the right wing for the Wasps, and Swansea get the first penalty of the match as the Wasps go in over the top. JJ Williams, a completely different atmosphere to the intensity we've uh, we've encountered at the Arms Park on Friday, and especially at King's Home in Gloucester yesterday. Complete opposite to King's Home, where it was uh, quite a threatening atmosphere for the Scarlets. 
Well, there's more of a, a carnival atmosphere here at Loftus Road, and quite a poor crowd. Of course, they haven't sold a game of club rugby to the Londoners like the people of Gloucester the tradition of. So that is why it's important that Lawrence Delario has his men pumped up, that they perform well on a home match so they can sell rugby to the locals. There is pride at stake, although no position in Europe for Lawrence Talalio and his team. As Gareth Reese intimated beforehand, that trouncing really hurt the London side. Conceding over 50 points at St Helens. It's a confident start by the All-Whites, but that's gone wrong for them. And the ball is now loose, it went forward from Swansea hands. And that's an intricate move that didn't work. No, it wasn't on really. Adwell Thomas should have known better really. There was no chance of Matthew Robinson taking the ball. Alex King was right in the face of Adwell Thomas there. And he should have just held the ball or just passed it out to Scott Gibbs. Good work by Martens. He's a very physical man at number nine. And here's Enterprise from the London side. Fraser Waters trying to break clear. And he's up the halfway. Kevin Morgan in his way. The kick, the chase, the fullback is Paul Sampson. He's a sprinter. The opening try comes to the Wasps. Dramatic shot. And the Wasps ahead. Five points to nil after just three minutes played. Well, we know that Paul Sampson, as you say here, is, is a sprinter. He showed it then, the ball bounced up currently for him, and he said thank you very much. I mean, it, it went the length of the field. Swansea put enormous pressure on the Wasps in the scrum, but they got that ball away. But Fraser Waters got through that gap way back in the Swansea, in the, in the Wasps half, when he shouldn't have really. Missed tackles by Steve Wynn. A little bit of... Come inside and swerve people, but really, a little bit of bounce ball. It was lucky, and the ball bounced up for Samson. He's a flyer, but really, it was the missed tackle by Fraser Waters. I feel that cost Swansea dearly. Well, that's a rude awakening for Swansea. If they arrived in any sort of complacent mood, that's disappeared with that dramatic opening from the Wasps. Kenny Logan will attempt to add the extra two points. Taking his time. Just crept inside the far upright. So it's the Wasp 7, Swansea nil. Just four minutes played. Yes, it was a huge scrum by Swansea way up the field. Because they were all down for the eight-man push. But that ball was whipped out quiz quickly to Fraser Waters. But the tackle in the midfield wasn't good enough. And then they had a fortunate bounce. And then the lucky bounce up again. But they took it well. It just shows the pace they have out wide. Former school's 100-meter yeah. champion in England, Paul Sampson. Once the bounce was kind, then there was only one result. Clever play by Worsley, placing himself for the tap back by Swansea. Alex King controlling it outside half. Kevin Morgan. Not a bad clearance from a, a very acute angle by Kevin Morgan. Delighted. If the rumours are true, to be called back into the Welsh squad. It was a big game for him. It impressed Graham Henry is here. All the Welsh selectors, Alan Lewis is here as well, so no better stage for him to do it. It is a good, there is Graham Henry, Mark Davis alongside him, looking like an Italian mafia man with his glasses on there. Martens, Arwell Thomas. Here we notice how high the ball is bouncing. I was on the field beforehand. It's rock solid, as you would expect from a football ground. Even though they've had a lot of rain this winter, the surface is rock solid. You see the ball bounce very high. It is a narrower ground than most rugby grounds, and the touch lines are very, very close yeah. indeed to the barriers. And there's hardly an in-goal area at all. So it could affect the run of the play in many ways. Tyrone Morley doing the cleaning up work for Swansea. Arwell Thomas. Steve Wynn. Good pass from Scott Gibbs. Steve Wynn, former Gen man at centre. And that's Colin Jarvis playing on the open side, although he's wearing six. Martens to take it further. Darren Morris will try and claim that for Swansea. That was quick hands by Gibbs, and just taking giving one. He said the, the opposition is right in his face. 
the game needed for Charvis now, charging down the middle, run into Karen Jenkins, referee missed that there, but upper body strength, having a great season, Colin Charvis. Well, there are problems near side in the front row. Darren Morris already had a look and a word with the referee on the near side touchline. Yeah, that's Darren Morris, big and burly, and against Rose, the wait. relatively inexperienced Elliot Webb. Oh. For the Yo, but it's uh, Morris who's penalised. And that's the impressive Joel Worsley. Alex King. King dancing through. Good work by the uh, Wasps outside half. Part of the Bristol connection in Wasps. It's a strong one. Almost broke the way again, Rob Henderson. Now it's Trevor Leota and there's a big roar every time he gets the ball in his hands. And that early score has given the Wasp confidence, there's no doubt, as they take the game to the All-Whites. That's fine, said the referee. It was up to the Wasps to play the ball, it was out and there could be extra men here for Swansea. That's Gibbs, looking both ways, Kevin Morgan on the switch. Robinson is up to nine in the tournament and remarkably it's his fifth against the Wasps he's done it again he certainly has the angles and the switch to come off the touchline the work this is as well Kevin Morgan was beautiful Gibbs did well here Kevin Morgan did the first switch then he straightened up now watch about the Robinson switch again come off the touchline he knew he was couldn't get to the corner and then it's all about acceleration and pace and he's got loads of it and that is a, a beautiful try by Swansea to, to reply to the Wasps try it really was a fine try JJ intelligent running by the ball just supporting the ball carrier Kevin Morgan initially and then Matthew Robinson and the pace all important yes and Arwell Thomas moved that ball quickly he knew he had the pace out wide give it a Gibbs Give it the quick man, Kevin Morgan, and then, of course, the master finisher, Matthew Robinson. It all came from Swansea driving over that ruck when Wasps had the ball, drove them off it, and then that ball came out. Excellent play. Arwell Thomas. It's just a formality to add the extra two, so the scores are tied at seven each. Not yet ten minutes played, and we've had two great tries to set the tone for the afternoon. Yes, but uh, the hallmark of, these try, of this try was the switches. You've had the one, and there's a second. We still had to accelerate. We said earlier that uh, Sampson was quick, and Matthew Robinson, beautiful acceleration. Now, he wants to impress in front of Graham Henry. We left out of Henry's plans recently, so here's a stage to do it for him once again. Alex King, Tyrone Mullins called for it, but it didn't come. That's Richard Burkett, Alex King. Good angle by Logan, well held by Sean Payne. Swansea's right wing. In from the side, that's a penalty against Swansea. Perhaps it was Ben Evans. Let's look to see if it was Ben Evans coming in from the side. He was cleaning it up in from the side, the referee said on his microphone. Kenny Logan with a kick that uh, could take him over the 50 points for the tournament this season. Now stands. 48. Nice clean strike. Straight as well, and uh, the Wasps are back in the lead. It's 10 7 to the London side. Swansea, before today, played 4 1 4. 
beat the Wasps and Stade Francais at home and then trounced the minnows of the whole tournament, L'Aquila of Italy, 70 points in both games. That's why they have an impressive tally of 26 tries. Arnold Thomas dropped goal. It's been his hallmark in the tournament. Three successes against the Wasps at home, three successes against that Francais as well. That one drifted wide, but he'll have a chance of a penalty. Yes, uh, the, referee, the referee was late to blow in the whistle there. He had given the penalty before he took the drop goal. Chavez does so well here. He turns the order there. Now that is ball for Swansea, but he has been turned by the Swansea back row man. Was already offside in midfield. Now will decides to go for the drop goal. Thomas, the conversion three minutes ago, time to score. Now, a chance to do so again for the penalty. Looks good, it is good, and it's ten points apiece. Well, 20 points in the first ten minutes of this game. All action, as you would expect. Perfect uh, rugby conditions. Both sides want to play open rugby, and that's exactly what we are seeing. Well, the Wasps started the tournament with great hopes. They've beaten the Italian side as well, but they lost heavily in France, in Paris against Stade Francais, and then were edged out by the French favourites at home as well. 28-31 the score, and that was the end of their ambitions for the tournament. Rob Henderson dragged back in the tackle in midfield by Colin Chavez. That's Burkett, the new man in the back row. That's a South Sea challenge. Liotta against Silino Martel. Samoa against Tonga. That's tribal warfare in London. It's Henderson with a drop goal attempt. Oh, that's awkward for Kevin Morgan. Just about recovered in time, but it's back to Trevor Liotta. Up to the 22. Oh. Henderson, good run by Samson. Had he taken it, it would have been danger. As it is, it's gone forward. Yeah, Sean Payne targeted uh, Liotta here, and they had a little con flap off the, the ground after as well. Kevin Morgan as well. And, and then when the ball moved out to the other side, these two kept on on a little fight on the floor but the referees ignored it unlucky for Kevin Morgan that the <laughs> haymaker just missed his face but Swansea will be targeting the auto when he has the ball they know they have to put big tackles in on him Big kick upfield from Arnold Thomas, didn't aim for the touchline. This is Samson. Good, powerful, determined run. Almost took him completely clear. Play just five metres inside the boss, far, far side of the field. The Swansea have stolen it, there are chances here. Arnold Thomas, out to Robinson. Robinson, the kick, the chase. Can he get there for a second? No. judge was on his way behind the posts Robinson wants it the referee said no yeah I think Mr Jockey Miller said that he's knocked this ball on Arwell should have given this ball quicker but watch the pace after the chip ahead by Robinson kicks the head now does he get the ball down or does he knock it on does he get there first let's have a look Whew, close that I don't think you can award a try there Robinson thought he had scored mind you it was a good turnover that field that wasn't it here by Swansea put the tackles in and then they saw death so devastating in the loose to get that ball out I think Arwell could have given that ball a bit quicker and the supporting runners just stayed where they were now this is the end does Robinson get down with pressure 
Uh, I think it's very debatable indeed. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and perhaps the scrum five is the correct decision. But touch and go. Yeah, I think the touches thought it was a try, but the referee insisted that it was uh, that he did knock it forward. Yeah, Howell Jennings got hurt here when uh, Paul Sampson ran through there and he got hurt in the tackle. He's hurt his knee, couldn't get up. He continued for a while, but he looks in distress. And uh, I think Moriarty's going to come on. I think. Yes, Paul Moriarty will be the replacement. Back in the fray. It's a mixed reception. <laughs> Good step to have, man. You, he's the man for all occasions, you know, and, and he loves the uh, the atmosphere of the big matches, doesn't he? has gone to number eight for Swansea in the middle of that back row and Moriarty on the flank Martens taking it quickly it's there for Swansea Robinson Geraint Lewis the trademark dummy and placing the ball for his team Garen Jenkins trying to gain extra yards Sililo Martens whipping it out to Arwell Thomas Steve Wynn almost found a gap in midfield holding on after the tackle penalty to the Wasps Oh, oh, how on earth can you release it? <laughs> he never gave him a chance then, did he? Wind did well to go on the straight angle, but it was good defending too by Henderson to take him down. Sean Payne. <laughs> well, that's Kenny Logan from nowhere. Arwell Thomas back for Swansea. That seemed a touch forward. Shrill blast, but it's only a set scrum and it goes the White's way. This game has been played at a tremendous pace, a lot of breakaways. Ball turned over a lot in the in the malls. That's the Wait. dangerous place to attack from. Gross, gross. Wait, wait, gross, wait, again. That Swansea scrum has served them well in the tournament this year, Sorry, especially gentlemen. when they were down to 14 men against that Sorry, the next penalty kick, okay. Wait, coach. Hang it! Moriarty, Martens, wasn't expecting it. Arwell Thomas, out to Kevin Morgan. That's a bad kick. Oh, and even worse by Kenny Logan. Well, almost like a goalkeeper. I know, a poor goalkeeper. Scottish goalkeeper. <laughs> but why didn't I, why didn't Kevin Morgan give that ball out? Let's look at this again. Does he get the pressure on the ball on the ground? Let's have a look. Can't get a better shot. No, can't give a try. It shouldn't have come to that though. It should have been simple give and take by yeah, Swansea. They got four that. against two. No need for the runs in field at all. Just a simple give and take, and it should have been a try. Martens did well. He's got Sean Payne outside. Payne is outside Simon Shaw. Looking back up to the 22. Swansea is swarming to this. Over the top. Needs a, a firm hand from the referee. Yes, possibly Payne should handle that ball. See, Gallantly was just screaming for it, decided to take it in. As soon as it comes straight over the top, and this is where the referee's given the penalty. Gallantly has got the ball straight over the top. They got, they lost it in attack again. They'd be disappointed to have lost that ball when they were supporters to keep it in hand. Referee wants a word, a word with Scott Gibbs. Kick against the youth. Yes. Four. Kick yeah. the ball. No, no, no problem. Had a problem. Number four. Yeah. Stamping. Okay. The next. The next yes, occasion. Yes. yes. Yellow card. Colors. Okay. Yeah. Remember. Yeah, we're only trying to get the ball away. No, the ball. You kill the ball because you're a player. Diving before the ball. Remember.
Tyler Morley in a second he's using his studs. Is that what he's talking about? <laughs> I'm diving over. Simon Shaw's ball in the middle line. They've got a ball each on the field at the moment. So, one off. And now we'll have Trevor Liotta. This time it's to Andy Reid, the Scottish international. A pair of Lions at lock for the Wasps. Nice little slip ball there by Liotta. Careering towards the touchline but kept it alive. Alex King in the midfield. Oh, lined up by Scott Gibbs. Rob Henderson knows the power now of the Swansea captain. And it's got a penalty for holding on. I thought Rob Henderson did well to stay on his feet there. Look at this target. He sees Scott Gibbs come in. He's hit him, but he's handled it well, I feel. He's turned around. He wants support. He hasn't got it. The more white jerseys there. Steve Wynn in there as well. But the referee, when they take it down, he says that Henderson is still holding on to that ball. There it is. You can see him holding on to it. Ardwell Thomas can put Swansea ahead for the first time. He's got the breeze at his back, by the way. So that could be a factor. It will be against the Whites in the second half, so they need a cushion. Ardwell Thomas seems to have pulled it wide, and he has. Yes, Adwell says that's how it should have gone. I'm disappointed to have miskicked that. Perfect kicking conditions. Goal kickers don't like the straight kick very often. They prefer somewhat of an angle. So, here goes Adwell Thomas again. Paul Sampson. Safe inside his own 22. Absolutely on his own. Sampson, infield, good pass. The England A-man, Martin Wood, at scrum half. That's a bad clearance again. We've had a few of those from Swansea. And it's released Alex King into the All-Whites 22. Wood, Henderson. And he's been out for six weeks, but he's ready for this. Yeah, that was nice running by Henderson. Took them inside and then swerved outside in tight situations. Strong centre, this clever runner. You see him, took that in Jenkins inside and outside, and halfway through that gap, hanging on to that ball. Very strong, very elusive. concentration twice and too important takes that he has dropped and there's can't forgive that really can you had it then lifted his head should have been in the basket and Adwell Thomas talking the midfield there's a great place to attack from the whole width of the field available to the Swansea three-quarters 
plenty of space to create your misses and your switches in midfield scrum right over by the touchline this is the perfect platform to launch them Wild pass from Silila Martens, but that's the man to pick up the loose play and gain ground for Swansea. It's Scott Gibbs. Martens, that's better. Paul Samson will have to hurry. He doesn't want to. Just lets it drift out of play. It's Joe Beardshaw on for Simon Shaw, by the way, wearing 19. Beard Shaw, Simon Shaw has left. Delalio at the back. What a great rugby player Lawrence Delalio is. All the skills for a back row forward and an inspiration always when he's on the field. Matthew Robinson waits. He's come to Henderson again. At the heart of the action throughout the afternoon so far for the Wasps. 28 minutes gone. It's Wasps 10, Swansea 10. Alex King. Seeing Matthew Robinson dropping that high ball. I, I think there's a swollen win out there. That doesn't give either side much of an advantage. That with all these dropped high balls, perhaps the ball is swaying a bit in the air for the, the players. Matthew. Drop that last one. Uh, should have taken it, turned the right way. It is swirling a bit, and that might be affecting them. Delalio now taking more responsibility in the lineout since Simon Shaw left. Anyone doubting uh, the Wasps' commitment to this game should have seen Lawrence Delalio's team talk beforehand on the field. He was really pumped up, reminding all the boss what happened at St. Helens. And this was the time to get some pride back. Robinson wants to keep it alive. He's done so, wriggled out of the tackle. And the kick and chase is on. Andy Reid waits. Good collection. But good chasing by Kevin Morgan as well. Tackle the big man who's placed it for Wood, now it's King King held and turned by Jarvis and that ball is there, Swansea side no Wasps have retrieved it well and Leota takes it further, Ben Evans is the man standing in his way in from the side and it's taken quickly, Samson Now then, what will the referee do? Ten. Yes, yes. The penalty term. Okay. It is a penalty. Swansea will argue that ball was out. And they sh should be allowed to play it. Now watch Martha Robinson. He's on his feet. The ball is out. It's definitely out. He comes around. I don't think that's offside myself. It might have been for not retreating 10 yards after well, yeah, the initial yeah, penalty. Yeah, he's going to give the penalty again, yes. <whistles> Logan. Is that there? No, it's not, they say. It was very close to the far upright. <laughs> From my angle, it seemed just inside. But relief for Swansea. The two touch judges said no. Yes, because the touch judges are right under the post. There's no dead ball, and one usually stands much deeper. You can't hear. And because of the short uh, in, in goal area, one touch just likes to stand deep. They can't do that. So it's very difficult for them. But it was the referee said it wasn't over.
by Sorrell Thomas. Um, the referee has said here that the ball touched him, I think, and so it is a scrum for Swansea. Um, I touched the ball, I say, the Just a you. trifle perplexing. Yes, why did he let him take it again then? That's a massive kick by Arwell Thomas. Just to emphasize once again that they have wind advantage in this opening half. Lively ball again, bouncing on the hard ground. Garin Jenkins cleaning up for Swansea. Sililo Martens to Scott Gibbs. Gibbs strong. Good ground gained. And now they have extra men. Kevin Morgan. Kevin Morgan back inside. Sean Payne was screaming on the outside. It's there again for Darren Morris. A loose pass by the loose head. But it is penalty to Swansea for offside by the Wasps. There's a wonder if Kevin Morgan couldn't have given out to Sean Payne there. Looked at a 2-1 to one to us from this side. Darren Morris taking his ball in contact. Must keep hold of it in the tackle. He wanted to unload that to Andy Moore. But you can't lose ball at this position of the field. Yes, he's offside over on the far side. That's where the pen has been given away. Swansea got off there because they did lose that ball in contact, which they'll talk about at half-time. When, when the forwards take it into the contact, they must keep it certainly in, in an attacking position. Arwell Thomas, just over six minutes remain. Swansea need the lead for half time that's wide again so it remains at Wasps 10 Swansea 10 Salilo Martens only just held by Joe Worsley Karin Jenkins leading that Swansea charge well Paul Moriarty in the thick of the action on the field big brother Richard the Swansea team manager is with Graham Thomas. Richard, it's all a little bit sloppy at the moment. Yes, uh, both sides have made a number of mistakes. Um, you know, I think uh, both sides are a bit on edge. Uh, but it, it's still, you know, it's, uh, it's a fascinating game. I just wish I was a casual observer on times. Um, but, you know... Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, some interesting decisions sometimes on the referee's part. But, uh, you know, I, I, th I think it's... Uh, it's a great contest, you know, the score is obviously telling you that these are two very evenly matched sides. Uh, both sides have missed a few, um, a few kicks at goal, but, uh, you know, I, as I say, I think it's, uh, it's a great game. Richard, thanks very much. No well, the movement for Swansea, while we were in conversation with Richard Moriarty, it seemed to create some space outright, but the crossing penalised by referee Claudio Gioacomel. the graph to tell you where the possession has gone in the opening 35 minutes ball dropped by Worsley advantage for Swansea they got men outright Martens Darren Morris Darren Morris great run by the loose head inside Sean Payne Payne still going looking for Robinson Robinson held by Shane Royzer as he slipped but it's still a chance for Swansea. Harwell Thomas. Geraint Lewis just couldn't get it out. Gibbs keeps it alive. Sean Payne again. Held by Martin Wood, the scrum half. Swansea building. Geraint Lewis. Good, firm, aggressive tackle by the Wasps. On the Swansea number seven. 
Swansea have lost this. It's black ball. It's got to be on the mark. And it's Henderson to clear. Swansea have lost this ball in contact on a number of occasions. That's what John Plumtree will be saying to them at half time. That one be they take it in the forwards, take it in there. You can see it there being turned over. If they'd won this ball, there was an overlap on both sides, but the wasps have stolen it off them, and they've done it to them a few times in this first half. Good travel in Bandit Swansea supporters and yeah. I think they realise they need to create the atmosphere. Yeah. The really tense atmosphere of a cup tie. There are some open spaces here at Loftus Road and it's unreal in many ways for a rugby game. Martin Wood, Alex King. King. It's come to Martens, Martens. He is strong in contact, that ball is bouncing about. And again, it's gone from Steve Wynn. It's all over the place at the moment. Well, it's frantic and a lot of mistakes been made because there's so much pressure and there's been played at pace that both sides have been hurried and rushed into mistakes by this uh, in-your-face tactics that both sides are employing and uh, if they can only settle it down, control it a bit, then someone will get the upper hand but at the moment, neither side have got that upper hand. He comes straight through there. And well, you know, I think Swansea could have got that ball away. They didn't clear off, did they? They, they left people to come through, but did they come from the rear foot or did they come in from the side? Was the ball out? Was the ball out? It's such a confusing phase of it all, isn't it? But if you clear it out and leave that ball for the scrum half and take the opposition out, it's easier for scrum half uh, Martins, isn't it? Graham Henry, a little shake of the head. The shades are back for Mark Davis, the physiotherapist. Paul B with Graham Henry in Australia in the summer. And then on Henry's left, Alan Lewis, coach of Newport, who sadly lost against Munster. Munster came with a late rush at Rodney Parade last night. And Alan is the sector here, isn't he, with the worst side? Martens. Good gap. Martens is clear. Gibbs is with him. Robertson, it's inside the Jarvis. And they're not just doing the simple things at times, Swansea. The support seemed to run away from Silvio Martens. It's offside by Swansea. And they've thrown away some chances in this opening half. They certainly are. That should have been seven points there. Give the man who got all the pace the ball. Matthew Robinson wanted it. And that little flick ball up into the face of Jarvis was a ridiculous pass. Now watch this pass. Why he does this reverse pass, I just don't know. When Robinson's outside, him screaming for the ball, straight into the face of Colin Chavez. What a chance to miss. Just before half-time, Swansea wanted a score then. 40 minutes are up. It's, on, even, it's, been, it's been a strange old half, hasn't it? Very loose at times. Steve Wynn, Steve Wynn completely clear. Now can they round it all off this time? It's Sean Payne. Payne is held by Kenny Logan. Swansea, about 12 metres out, is there for Anwar Thomas. He was looking the other way. And the ball's gone forward. Well, again, when the centre makes a break like that, he should finish off. This time it was Kevin Morgan and Sean Payne couldn't quite get on the shoulder of Steve Winnie when he went down. He's looking for support, it's not around, so he's waiting for them, so he has to wait. And of course that allows the defence to come back. Was too well to get it back when there's a big overlap then the left. The pass to Arwell Thomas was nowhere near finding him. And another opportunity missed. Well, Swansea have created almost as many opportunities yeah. as they did in their big score at home against Wasp. But they're not clinical so far and they're finishing. Oh, I feel here if you make a break like that, space is so difficult. If you create the space, you make the break down the middle, you must finish it off. 
Remarkably, it's still 10 points apiece. Just one try apiece. handling there at rate. But Swansea have another chance. Can they keep it in the hands this time? Can they build the faces? Can they get the score? They'll have a chance. Arwell Thomas turns to Scott Gibbs to see what the captain wants. He holds the feet oh, with the ball. He kills the ball. He kills the ball. The diving is the second. The next is yellow yeah, for you, okay, for professional. If, if the scrum wheels, we come up and we re scrum. Yeah, please? Yes, but. Okay. But it's not this occasion. Okay. It's not been unkind, I'm sure, JJ, but the players always seem a bit bemused when we have. Uh, an Italian referee in charge of an European Cup tie this season. Yeah, Reed falls offside. There was readers complaining that someone tried to boot him in the face there, which is a fair complaint. There's a touch judge there to pick that up. He doesn't have to say anything to the referee himself, but he had come into an offside position. Now, can Arwell Thomas nudge Swansea ahead before the interval? It could uh, well be the last chance of this opening half. He's failed with his last two attempts. Now then, composed, he's turned away, that seems good enough for Swansea, it is the final whistle blown on a strange at times scrappy opening half, but at least Swansea disappear to the dressing room with a three point lead, it's Swansea 13-10 ahead, JJ Williams. Well they deserve the lead because they've done most of the attacking apart from that uh, early try of Paul Sampson against Swansea. Swansea played some good rugby but they'll be disappointed they haven't put more points on the board going in, into that tunnel and a half time. They've dominated, they've created chances and haven't been clinical to finish off. They've also been turned over in the tackle by the forwards and that's what John Plumtree and the coaches Clive Griffiths will be saying in the first in, in the dress room at half time. Cut out the mistakes, let's finish off, let's be more clinical, they can win this cup tie. Well, Paul Sampson gave the Wasps a dramatic opening with a length of the field try almost 7-0 ahead. Matthew Robinson responded for Swansea, it was 7-all. Swansea have had their chances, but just two penalties by Arwell Thomas to one by Kenny Logan. And I'm sure Swansea will want to tighten things all round in the second period. At the interval then, it's Wasps 10, Swansea 13. Well, sometimes games take a little time to warm up. <laughs> Not this one. This no. one. Straight in. Helter skelter, confusion. It's entertaining, really, isn't it? Yeah, very entertaining. And um, I think Swansea, uh, you know, are, are dominating the game. They just, you know, they're creating chances, not scoring them, but uh, having a lot of turnovers. You know, when they get into attacking position, you know, they, they seem to lose the ball. Yeah, they're not playing with. They're not as clinical as they've been uh, the last uh, last few months. Certainly, uh, since they played uh, Wasps at home earlier on in the season. But I think out wide they've got they've got the beat down midfield. I mean, Steve Wynn and Scott Gibbs yeah. are, are are playing well, and I think obviously Matthew Robinson's looking as sharp as he's done for a while. And uh, but it's just getting them getting them the ball. They're making the clear breaks, but uh, you know you need to get ball to them early and give them time and space. The, the, the alarm bells are though that they should be 15 points clear. Mm. They should have this game buried by now and. Uh, a three-point margin. Sometimes these things come back to haunt you. Yeah, but I think you know. On the other side of it, you've got to think right. We're creating chances. The only thing we do, we're panicking. You know, like uh, throwing loose passes, uh, maybe taking the wrong option. If we are, if they are creating, just calm down a little bit. And even if it, you know, they don't have to panic. Go to the ground. Start again. You know, well, they, they, when they're in, when they've got the ball, they're in control. So yeah, we need a bit a bit more patient, I think, more than anything mm. else, and use our will a bit more yeah. to, to, to yeah. have runners off our will because yeah. they're, they're, on few occasion we've been isolated because people are taking ball from uh, Cyril Martins, people like Geraint Lewis, Chavez, even some of the props, and they've been isolated and we've been turned over because they're on their own. Yeah. Yes, it's those single runners mm. in the sea of black shirts. Yeah. Okay. Tries, entertainment, and good tries at that, weren't they? Yeah. So. Here we go, this is how the funnel started. Well, that, was, that was from a, a Miss Swansea mistake, they had the overlap, and all of a sudden, well, they break a mistake by Steve Wynn, and it's one thing the Wasps have got, they've got pace, especially this guy. And he gets a lucky uh, you know, kick at the start, and a lucky bounce, and 
you're not going to stop him. But that all comes from a Swansea mistake, missed tackle, and then get yeah. through. I mean, I mean, in fairness, Lawrence Delalio did well. I mean, we haven't seen it on, uh, on on this piece of action, but he got hit back from a scrum that was going backwards. But he still did well to, to, to get the possession back. We thought it was all coming back yeah. Swansea's way, but he actually got back uh, on the Wasp side. Yeah, I think that um, Wasps playing into the wind, mm. it helps them in a way. When you're, when you're kicking downfield, you can kick into the breeze, knowing mm. that the ball isn't going to spill over that dead ball. And the dead ball line is, is, is what, yeah. three yards? Yeah. If you're yeah. playing with the wind behind you, any kick ahead is liable to, to just mm. go dead. Yeah, it's right. And um, I, I think that... Uh, Kenny Logan's having another shocker. Um, <laughs> so another shocker. When he, when, he, when he gets some, he gets some good, doesn't he? You know, he's either brilliant or rubbish. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I think Swansea need to play on him a little this afternoon. Must be honest, because yeah. uh, that's if he stays on and, long enough. And, <laughs> to be able and to talk do. to him as well when he's kicking goals. Make sure you talk to him and um, put him off when he's kicking. So. Uh, and gentlemanly conduct, maybe, but um, it's a European Cup tie. Yeah, so leave, yeah. leave poor Kenny alone, because Swansea had their own reply, which was uh, <coughs> a, a very well worked try. You were purring, Jonathan. Yeah, it's great. Look at that. This is, you know, they, they just spoil it. It's so slow. Look at that. I think that's out you know, but that's it. They drive through. That's good play. You know, they just, he was just waiting. There was nothing happening behind for the, the scrum up. And all of a sudden, they've got numbers. Gibbsy does well here, straightens up, then goes across. You know, entices uh, Kevin Morgan in, and again, same thing, waits there, it's a prop there, and he's, uh, you know, in no man's land, that's a great, great reply. I think it's great because we talk about the game now where so few forwards get committed to rucks, and so they end up spreading out the midfield. Swansea actually committed forwards that ruck, got the turnover, which created so much space for the three quarters, it was um, very old-fashioned, really. It's thinking on your feet as well, isn't it? I mean, mm. the ball's at the back. I mean, so, ma so many times we see a ball at the back of rucks and malls, but people, as you said, just spread out, waiting for that possession to be moved. Yeah. But, you know, the opportunity's there. If you go in and drive over the ball from behind the ruck of the mall, you know, you, you, you can win it back. And Darren Morris did it on that occasion, you know, thinking yeah. on his feet. What, yeah. And, um, I said, given the opportunity. And what they do as well is, once there is a turnover, just get it away from there, because all their players are congregating. And I think it happened again. Matthew Robson scored there, but... You know, what the one that he, he didn't score, I still, I know it's a close call. This comes from a, a turnover and quick play. But watch this, you know, the, the linesman is the closest and he says it's a try. Watch this now. Does he get downward pressure? I think he does get downward pressure. It the linesman's on his way. He, linesman is the closest to the player and he's on the way around. The Italian referee isn't having a great game. So you should have listened to the lines when I'm gone round to the Listen, posts. I have to say it's one all. It's one all here. I got the casting vote. Robert, you don't think it was a try? I don't actually. No. <laughs> I mean, we had how a. Much, we had, how much do we had a, you want? We had a close up earlier on. I don't think he actually controlled the ball when he put the pressure on. Two one. No, no well, try. I well know, done, I, the I, Italian I, I referee. Can't leave it. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> he on the shotgun. The yeah. touch judge was 15 yards away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's 15 yards close to the referee. Uh, uh, okay, anyway, it wasn't the only chance Swansea missed because. Uh, Towards the end, I mean, when the scrimmage really got going, I thought that was the most mm. encouraging sign for Swansea. Here, are rock solid on their own ball, but uh, yeah. um, you oh. know, they could have scored from here, Robert. Yeah, they could. Have. A great break by uh, Celino Martins, but uh, again, the scrum with a right hand shoulder give uh, give Gerard Lewis, I think, the opportunity to put Celino Martins into space. And this is where you need people like Matthew Robinson. You've got to give it to him. You've got to give it early. I and it was just the yeah. wrong option as it was. The pass wasn't that bad actually, but I, it was uh, probably the wrong option. When they do the break, I think they're too deep. Mm. You know, if the guy's on his own, running through, he can't see you, or you know, you've got to shout at him. And I think that, you know, when, when someone does break, full back should be there, or one of the wingers, and they're just a little bit too deep all the time, and it's, it's, you know, it's making it difficult for him to make that decision. Yeah, well, the killer pass wasn't delivered um, for the final efforts once he had to score a try. Here we go, it's uh, Celino Martins involved again. Good ball there, good take by um, Paul Moriarty at the tail. Well, that's easy, you know, that, they, just, they just don't read the defence. They're drifting out and they just come on a short ball. And then they just... Uh, yeah, probably you know, Kevin Morgan took a wrong option. I think Kevin Morgan came inside rather than just staying out wide yeah. where, where the, the opportunity was. And it just sums the mistakes that, you know, they've made when they're in good positions. When they're, when they're in good positions, they've made mistakes. Mm. And, you know, Mm. You've got to try and cut that out. Good news for Swansea at half time. They're leading by 13 points to 10. But of course, Pontypridd are playing today. They're away in Glasgow against the Caledonians. Half time report now from Edward Bevan. At half time here in Perth, it's Glasgow Caledonians 18, Pontypridd 12. 
with Pontypridd indebted to outside half Lee Jarvis. He's kept them in touch with three penalties and a drop goal. Glasgow, though, have been the most enterprising of the two sides, playing expansive rugby in quite perfect conditions, and their reward have been two tries. The first scored by fullback Rowan Shepherd when he came into the line, and then the second by outside half Tommy Hayes after good work by the back row. 13 points for Hayes so far. It's Glasgow 18, Pontypridd 12. Right, Pontypridd down at half time. What have Swansea got to do here, Jonathan, to win this? Uh, just keep it going. What what they can't afford to do is um, give Wasps the opportunity to, to counter attack because I think they're, they're not the most organised side um, uh, going. But uh, what they can do, they can break and, and score from any because they've got pace. So just keep that control and try and be more clinical, you know, because if they do that, I think they could win comfortably. I think you've got to be patient with the ball. Yeah. I think that, that, that's important. I think they're playing against the wind. They probably keep the ball in hand a little bit more so they won't perhaps kick as much as perhaps they did, they've done in the first uh, first half. So keeping ball in hand, keeping ball fairly close and tight, I think is probably the uh, the best option. Yeah, I think the um, the kick ahead does become an option. I don't want to contradict you, Robert, but it, you know, the, it does become an option because it will be held up in the breeze. But, um, you know, um, I don't... I don't no, I mean maybe maybe that you know I mean obviously it is an option, but I think I think the probability is that people when you've got people like Chavez and that yeah. who can play inside and outside are well, and then you can use Gibbsy as well on his shoulder. I think that's probably the, the last know. option you say, you know. It's the last <laughs> option. Yeah. I tell you what, well, the first option. <laughs> that Swansea hand, pack right. can get stuck into a few scrums early on. They could do some real damage <coughs> there. Anyway, yeah. the crowd at Loftus Road is uh, nearly ready for the second half. They're standing there. That's just not a bad crowd. It didn't look that. Big from the side, but um, I thought it was quite noisy when Swansea attacked. There was, I think, there's a big uh, Swansea following up there, and uh, you know, I, I just feel that the referee again, the scrimmaging is extremely powerful, and uh, does he really understand what's going on? Because Delalio is going to talk him out of, uh, you know, the, the scrimmage rules. Signor Giacomel will be in charge of Scott Gibbs and Co. In the second half, let's rejoin the commentary team, JJ and Hugh. Scott Gibbs leading out Swansea for the second half. All of Swansea know that they could lose today, go to France next week and win and top the group. And the winners of this group are likely to be the number one seeds as well for the quarterfinals. But they really want to keep the momentum going. They don't want to lose today because they're on a roll. 14 victories on the trot and constant victories bring a lot of confidence. Yes, we were talking to uh, Richard Moriarty half hour for kickoff, and he said this is the game they've always targeted to win up in Wasps. So this next 40 minutes so important to them. They have ambitions to win the group and to uh, go, go all the way in this tournament, which they're well capable of doing, as are Cardiff. And interestingly, uh, we had a look at the groups last night, a possible <laughs> quarter-final uh, lineup. And if Swansea top their group, it's not impossible that they'd get a home draw against Sanessi yeah. if Sanessi beat Colombia. What a mouth-watering prospect that would be. Kenny Logan starts the second half, deep into Swansea territory, and it's Geraint Lewis. Running the ball back for the All-Whites. Martens, Hardwell Thomas, first kick against the breeze, and it's a good one. All sorts of permutations still possible, of course, for the quarter-finals. But if Sanetti win on Friday night against Colombia, that's our next live game on BBC Wales, then they're in with a chance of getting through as uh, one of the two best runners-up. Simon Shaw is back on. Heavily repaired for the second half. If Swansea finish runners-up in this group, by the way, then their probable fate will be away against Leicester or possibly away at Munster. That ball's gone forward, it's a Swansea scrum. But it's all conjecture at the moment, isn't it? Because there's a lot to happen today and next weekend before that final lineup for the quarter-finals will be known. I don't know, Logan did knock that ball on, you know, when uh, Chavez came in, I think he kicked it backwards. He's having a good game, Darren Morris. He's uh, scrummaged well, he's run well in the open in front of Graham Henry, still pushing for a place in that national side. 
playing in loose head for Swansea today, experimented uh, with for Wales on the tight head, yeah. but now that David Young is back, uh, that necessity yeah. seems to be less. Now, does he knock it on? Or does Jarvis knock it back? Or does it go off Logan's foot yes. even? Yes, that's what you have to put in. Yes, you're saying about Darren Morris, he looks a portly figure, but he is quite mobile and he has got very good hands, as we've seen this afternoon. Martens and it's down to Kevin Morgan with a bit of space Arwell Thomas Scott Gibbs straight route good offload to Steve Wynn and Wynn did well to keep it on the Swansea side as well Moriarty Gibbs the little dummy the little shimmy then the handoff Arwell Thomas standing deep, the drop goal is the attempt. Way off target again by Arwell Thomas. His golden period with the drop goals was early in the tournament. Three against the Wasps at home and then crucially three more in the narrow two-point victory against that Francais. It wasn't a bad option to go for the drop goal, there wasn't much on really. The defenders were out wide, three points just after half-time would be valuable to them. Alex King restarts, Andy Moore, and then it's Ben Evans, and now Darren Morris again. Arwell Thomas, Geraint Lewis, Geraint Lewis, rushing Alex King aside, and now it's Garin Jenkins. Again, it's lost in that contact, strangely for Garin Jenkins, and Paul Samson, tremendous surge of pace. Moriarty doing his best, Samson is there, Samson is favourite for this. So, so close, Swansea back in numbers now, but the Watts are there as well and still their ball. Samson opened the game with a dramatic score, he almost opened the second half in similar fashion. Out it goes. Wasps are pressing hard for the opening score of the second half. Wood out to Leota. Leota's on his own. That's sometimes enough. Morris holding his man. Offside. Lateral. Offside and four. No advantage. Offside before. Lateral inside. Offside before you were saying, was he? I think when Leota had the ball first time, that's when the penalty was given away. He waited for the advantage. There wasn't any. Then he's given it to the penalty to Wasps. I think the penalty's been given away before this. Darren Morris again working, getting that ball through on a good game. Paul Sampson is a dangerous attacker here, isn't he? You know, if that ball had bounced up, he would have scored that try. Joe Beard shows back on, this time instead of Andy Reid, who's limped away. And Beardshaw this time seems on for good. Play the ball, yes! Delalio arriving to take charge. Wood out to King. Good move, and uh, Samson was almost clear, but Jarvis has stolen it for Swansea. Great work by the Swansea number six. Gibbs, Gerard Lewis, Robinson. Delalio shadowed the man well. They're aware of the pace of Matthew Robinson. Well, we've seen two top-class back row men working there. There's Delalio getting out to stop uh, Robinson, and we saw Chavez come in with Steve Wynn. Then watch Chavez take this ball off uh, the defender here. He's in there, whipping it out straight away. Wynn did well to, to stop uh, the midfield thrust as well. Those two could be together in the Lions' back row in Australia in the summer. Colin Chavez, Lawrence Delalio, both leading contenders at the moment. In it comes from Lyota, that's Joe Beardshaw, back on the field. Replaced Simon Shaw for a long period in the opening half, now on for Andy Reid. Oh, 
Moriarty penalised. Kenny Logan called up and he's going for goal. What's put him up? Well, what's Paul Moriarty? He's made the tackle and he's stopping that ball coming back. He's he's holding the ball in on the tackler. Let's get a attempt to roll away from it. Kicked two and narrowly missed with the third in the opening half. Kenny Logan, seven minutes gone of the second. A chance for the opening score. Logan, he likes it. And it's 13 all. Well struck by Kenny Logan. Had a few problems with his hands in the opening half. But he's been fairly secure with that right foot. It's really struck it. The win we think it's coming from that corner, helping that kick there. But he hit it beautifully, didn't he? Swansea almost retrieved it, but it's come to Joe Worsley. And now it's the prop Elliot Webb. Remember, Wasps without their two first choice props in that front row. This is Simon Shaw. In by Ben Evans and then Garin Jenkins Liotta very aggressively in on his opposite number but it's out to Arwell Thomas and that's a sensible kick it's well placed by Arwell Thomas yes that's a good kick putting Swansea right up into the uh, Wasps 22 and they haven't been in the Wasps half much in the second half so it's a good tactical kick and what's Garin Jenkins he takes his tackle from Liotta but he still gets this ball back Swansea hooker does remarkably well but that must have hurt Joe Beardshaw, Swansea want to drag him towards the touchline, but it is controlled by the Wasps at the moment. It's all very slow and untidy, and in the end, Swansea are offside. <laughs> Andy Moore, happily back after a period out with an injury, but... Uh, News from the touchline that Howell Jenkins could be out for a while, left the field in the opening half and suspected cruciate ligament damage. So that's a blow for Swansea. Yeah. Howell Jenkins fitted in well since arriving from Stradi Park for this season. Delalio again, commanding at the back. Held by Martens. Wood King. Martens again in strongly with the challenge Rob Henderson well Eddie Butler was saying at half time that the kick and chase is always an option a good option against the breeze and especially so when the ball bounces as awkwardly and unpredictably as it does here on this hard surface this afternoon you are asking me about kick and chase are you? that's a, that's a novelty Delali a big player for Wasps, isn't he? You know, he controls everything. He's so good in this land and his hands are so perfect and upper body strength. Once you've stolen that, Darwell Thomas. Big, big gap. Is the kick too far? That might run dead and it could be a scrum all the way back in the Swansea half. It is. Oh dear. <laughs> a rueful smile on Arwell Thomas's face. I don't think his teammates are smiling. Well, there was a massive gap down in that corner. Just a good tactic. You can see it here from this camera angle. But he wanted the ball to bounce the other way. Unfortunately for Arwell, the shape of the rugby ball, he bounced the wrong way. If it had gone into touch, what a place he would have found. Good scrummage by Swansea. Putting the pressure on the Wasps. They missed a few first-time tackles as well, Swansea, this afternoon. Paul Moriarty there protesting, he was pulled back. The referee has given offside against the Whites. Matthew Robinson was up. Yes, as 
Matthew Robinson, the far side of this ruck that is offside. A foot takes that ball out of the scrum half's hands, out of Martin Wood's hands, but it was Robinson, the far side, the referee picked on. Good kick by Alex King, but the Swansea number 10, Arwell Thomas, seems to have twisted his uh, ankle or something. He seems uh, in a little bit of trouble. The trumpet sound, and Arwell Thomas is in a bit of pain. Yes, he's got that calf strap, so I don't think there is a, a pull as he's been having before this game. See the bottom of the hamstring on the calf muscle is strapped. And a calf injury is always one of the worst to have. Good stuff to have, my Kerry Threese, talented boy himself. Three greats to outside uh, halves at Swansea, aren't they? Arwell Thomas, Kerry Threese, and the up and coming Gavin Henson, yeah. who's a name for the future as well. Yeah. How can they keep those three happy in Swansea? But uh, I think we're in the stage of the game now here, whoever scores next will be an important score. Because neither side have had dominance. This is the period of the game where someone wants to score. Swansea challenging again and uh, doing so successfully. Colin Jarvis. Jarvis finding space. Great run by Jarvis. Now then, who's the quickest? Sean Payne is going, but Samson, the sprinter, is back first. I knew who was the quickest there. I've seen Paul Sampson on the track, I saw him have a medal in the British Under-20s Championship and you have to have a medal there, you must be a class sprinter. I don't know if Colin should have kicked this ball here, but he looked for support, again it wasn't on his shoulder. So then it's all about pace and there was always one winner, Paul Sampson against Sean Payne, Sampson won it easily. But it's still good ground gain for Swansea, yeah. they were under pressure, it was a Wasps line out. In their 22, and a great breakaway by Colin Jarvis. Again, the support isn't close enough for the man who's breaking away. Gareth Lewis, that's a practice move. It didn't really come to Darren Morris. It was too awkward for the Burley prop. That was a lovely break by Charles. So again, that support wasn't with him. So I thought he, th he thought himself, well, I might as well just kick it down the field to relieve the pressure. But being kept in hand, you never know what might have happened. But again, the support isn't quick enough, as I was saying. Andy Moore's ball for Swansea. Now it's Darren Morris rumbling away, turning, twisting, staying on his feet. That's a penalty for Swansea. It's against Trevor Liotta. He knew it. He didn't even look at the referee. Oh, I wonder if Adwell wants to take this because he's had this calf injury and of course you have the calf injury goal kicking is difficult for you Darren Morris having a great game he's hit the tackle of Leota he's rolled around that he's held it he's having a great game now he wants to set it back and they want the quick possession but watch Leota he's coming from the wrong side straight arm as well nasty bit of work he is isn't he <laughs> not the man for a dark oh, alley on a Saturday that. night is it <laughs> <laughs> have a job in the James Bond film, he could, couldn't he? <laughs> Fearsome features. <laughs> An important kick again for Ottawa, and it's, uh, the wind is blowing up, it's blustery here, it's swollen around the stadium. Pressure on him, he's used to the pressure though, isn't he? Delalio wouldn't like to lose to a Welsh side twice in one competition, would he? The well, two sides met a couple of seasons ago, didn't they, in the same uh, tournament, and uh, the Wasps won both that time, although it was a brave fire hit by Swansea up here. Now then, those are the kicks for Arwell Thomas so far. Can he add another three points? That looks good. Swansea are back in the lead after 16 minutes of the second half. They are up to 16 to the Wasps 13. Now keep your eyes on Trevor Liotta. 
There he comes. Bang! It's high, it's dangerous, and it's from the wrong side. I think he should be yellow carded for that. Professional foul on a dirty on a dirty uh, act really. Arm up straight, wanted to do some damage. That's untidy by Swansea. Tyrone Morlin knocks it uh, the Wasps way. It's gone forward then from Rob Henderson. It's a lively ball, isn't it? It's yeah. all over the place. Well, I was saying earlier that uh, the ground is rock solid out there. It's cut, the grass is cut very short for the footballers played here, obviously, and it's rolled. So when the ball is bouncing about, it's bouncing higher than the players been used to. I said that Wasps do play here every fortnight. They should be used to it. And St Helens is yeah. closely cropped as well, yeah. isn't it? Geraint Lewis lost it to Martin Wood. He has half a chance for the Wasps. Kenny Logan stepping back inside. Out to the tackle of uh, Geraint Lewis. So many mistakes aren't there. Both sides losing the ball consistently all game. But Logan didn't want to take that ball into the, into the players. Again, Geraint Lewis disappointed that he had that ball pinched to him when they wanted to have the blind side worked. But when Logan has this ball and he comes back inside, the chip ahead was never on. Martin Woods, scrum half, member of England's World Cup squad. Didn't feature very strongly, but he was there. So highly regarded. Out to King. King to Henderson. Henderson, the Irish international. Wood again. King. Nice little chip. Oh, yes. It's a second for Paul Sampson. Set it with this boy, blistering pace, lovely chip ahead. The ball will bounce up on this hard field, and he takes it superbly against the run of play. You might must say, but he's got a feature in England plan sooner or later. This boy with this pace, doesn't he? But a lovely pace, chip, chip kick, defense flat, wanted the kind bounce, loads of pace, timed it beautifully. Can't do anything about it. It's the second kind bounce for, uh, yeah. for Samson. It's beautifully placed by Alex King. It's inside Kevin Morgan. The Swansea fullback could do nothing, but it's right in the hands of Paul Sampson, and that's why he's celebrating his second try. Yeah, he's a strong boy as well. You know, he timed that well. He's got good hands. That's why he's playing fullback. They're not playing out on the wing. Good try by him. Logan trying to turn a two-point lead into a four-point advantage. Now then, that's the reaction of the Swansea captain, Scott Gibbs. Emphasizing the importance. Do you want to progress in this tournament? Do we want to keep our winning streak, that's what he's saying. Now let's buckle down for this final quarter of the game. 20 minutes gone, 20 left. The ball didn't travel the required 10 metres, so it's back into midfield for the Wasps, and the mistakes are still there. Confusion time again, isn't it? Jarvis protesting, the scrum turned, and he just was there. He was still bound, he said. The referee said he was offside. Leota. Moriarty gets his hands on it for Swansea. Ben Evans. Hardwell Thomas. Straight out. James Griffiths is on the far touch line, poised to come on for Swansea. And I think it's Tyrone Morlin who's off. He had some treatment uh, a few minutes ago, Tyrone Morlin, he's off. James Griffiths is on. Joe Beachaw for the Wasps, Martin Wood to Alex King. King to Shane Royzer. 
We haven't seen much of the Wasps right wing. Henderson. Martin Wood again. Another deft little chip from that uh, left foot of his. Kevin Morgan had to play it. It wouldn't go dead for him. Oh. And King is controlling better than Arwell Thomas at the moment. Yes, he's an experienced outside half and his little chips ahead. He's working better than Arwell's at the moment. Because he knows he has pace out there. It's a very difficult ball for Kevin Morgan. He thought of letting it roll over the line, but knowing these men are so quick upon it, they had to be safe and put that ball into touch. Joe Beardshaw again. Simon Shaw is almost a passenger for the Wasps in the line-out. He's holding his shoulder and he's not contributing. But they've had one second row off already in Andy Reid, so Shaw has to stay. He's in there in the middle, they're all going for it, it's another try. And it could be a very, very popular scorer. Now then, was it Simon Shaw? They were all in a heap, but it could well be Simon Shaw to be credited with a try. Perhaps not contributing in the line-out, but then support of Trevor Liotta. The drive was on, and the lock forward is the man who gets it down. Yes, it was Simon Shaw. Liotta was involved, Delalia was involved, but Swansea were disappointed that they allowed him to score there from that line-out. It was well organised, but Swansea had numbers back. But it's so well organised and the body angle by Simon Shaw, and he is a massive man. He's the one who's reached out for that try. And all of a sudden, Wasps have taken control. Logan to aim for some swaying posts. They're swaying those uprights in the breeze. That is freshening all the time. Well, that hasn't even crossed the try line. <laughs> Let alone the crossbar. Yeah, but he has. Simon Shaw, that's the damaging thing for Swansea. Reached out over there. Had numbers out there. James Griffiths just came on the field. He couldn't hold him up. Now they could Martins. He doesn't have the size to hold him up. But now Wasps are in the, the driving position. 25-16. They've got a nine-point lead. King again. It's a cultured left foot. And uh, for the past 10 minutes, it's controlled the game. Yes, the, the right tactics by King there. Just to see the big gap. Let's put it down there. Let's go to try in the other touchline a few minutes ago from this position. But this time it's the Swansea throw in. Now they must be accurate with this throw and catch. Controlled possession that Swansea would want from a defensive lineout. Martin sensibly taking it on himself. They jumped against James Griffiths there, didn't they? He's just come on the field. And possession difficult to come by the young second row. Delalio jumping against him. Statistics on the tackles uh, this afternoon. Henderson again. Well, they've got the bit between their teeth now, the Wasps. They're looking the more eager, the two sides. It's like the Roys are, Roys are back inside of Samson. Forward pass, and Swansea gained some sort of relief. Yeah, Wasps are on fire now, Swansea can't get the, the hands of the ball, and it's all Wasps put some tack, put some moves together. Roy's uh, taking the ball out, but there's a forward pass there. But they're taking the ball from one touchline, they put a width to it, taking out the other side.
Gerrit Lewis hasn't quite got the power of a Scott Cunell from uh, the base of that scrum. Possession back to the wasp, Paul Sampson. A further blow for Swansea hopes. Another penalty, and up steps up, Kenny up. Logan. Well, didn't they knock that on then? Didn't the Wasps man knock that ball forward? Five sixteen to the Wasps. This would make it a twelve point lead. Three more. Twenty eight minutes gone. It's twenty eight sixteen. Well, I thought that was a knock on, you know, the pen he was given against Swansea, but I thought the big second row knocked that ball forward and Scum should have gone to Swansea. Things aren't going for the Whites at the moment. Chris Anthony is on for Ben Evans for Swansea, a tight head prop. But the Wasps now are pinning Swansea down in their own 22. They're chipping this ball on. Little breeze blowing behind them. Swansea can't get away from the danger zone. See and the, the graph emphasizing that uh, the Wasps are controlled possession in the second half. A prop replacement for the Wasps as well. Darren Malloy is on for Andy Le Chevalier. The horse has gone and Darren Malloy is on. James Griffiths, not in straight. The errors are coming into the Swansea game, isn't it? Yes, their hopes are ebbing away. Yeah. There's a cent centre replacement for the Wasps as well. Mark Denny for Fraser Waters. Wait, wait. Engage. There's Waters, gone, Denny wearing 18. Well, let's look at this knock-on here now, the penalty was given against the Wasps. That is a knock-on by the Wasps. And of course, they conceded three more points from that wrong decision. But that's another interesting scrum, Swansea put some pressure on Delalia thought he had he could play it but the referee blew up straight away then the put in has gone to Swansea the Whites have 10 minutes left to get back into this game they're at the wrong end of the ground at the moment on their own 22 got Gibbs Gibbs strong powerful can he be inspirational as well that's Chris Anthony the replacement prop Welsh international for Welsh international in the Swansea front row there's a little more urgency now in Swansea. Robinson got the early try. Could, should perhaps have had one or two more in that opening half. Hasn't had many opportunities since. Yeah, that's where Swansea have slipped up in this game, is that uh, he didn't score just before half-time without opportunities. There's the switch and there's the strength of Scott Gibbs going even through Lawrence Delalio there and they're looking for defence, looking for support. Once you have changed their scrum half, Rodri Jones is on for Cirilo Martens. But it's a watching role for Rodri at the moment. It's Wasp ball. Henderson. Oh, 
Delalio with Paul Sampson, who has the legs on him. I think if Robinson had been in a position of uh, of the other wing, Payne, he would have finished off more clinically. But they got a combination of a pacey man and a strong man. That's all most sides like to do now with their two wingers. And one senses that uh, Swansea's last hopes have gone, that they could convert that in two points in any way whatsoever. They still trail by 12 points, and just over two minutes of proper time remain. Redeeming thing could be said, it's still Swansea ball. Rodri Jones, Darren Morris. Morris popping it up, Paul Moriarty in close attendance. Swansea just inside their own half. Clever pass by Rodri Jones, Geraint Lewis is there. Rodri Jones again to Arwell Thomas, Arwell Thomas spinning it out to Steve Wynn. Win looking for Sean Payne. It's been stolen by the Wasps again. That was Richard Burkett coming away. Well, the dying stage is JJ. Who claims the man of the match? Well, I'm picked Paul Sampson, the Wasps fullback. He's got two outstanding tries and he's been excellent in defence. He's denied uh, Swansea on a number of occasions in defence and he's been clinical in, in attack. Well done, Paul Sampson. Two crucial tries, and they, as much as anything, have sealed the fate of Swansea this afternoon. Yeah, Swansea will be disappointed with their performance. Now, we were saying earlier this morning that we think they could win this title this season, but they've, wait, wait. there's been an error-ridden performance by them, and they know it, and they'll be disappointed. They'll have to put it all right next week out in, out in Paris. Rodri Jones, Chris Anthony. Rodri Jones again, Geraint Lewis, out to Colin Chavez, Chavez is held by Joe Worsley, Worsley right there at the thick of the action again, he's a fine flank forward this man, they've got a wealth of talent in England in that position, in the back row, Henderson has enjoyed himself, but has he created a problem, lucky he got it back himself, 40 minutes have come and gone, and it's still a 12 point lead for the Wasps, Martin Wood bringing a, a semblance of order and it's a good clearance. Yes, on the half box have kicked the ball well for Wasps. And it's a healthy force, they've never been under threat, they put that ball down there. And Swansea half box haven't been quite as controlled as uh, the Wasps half box. But I think Swansea will be disappointed because they are a class side and I still think they can go on and do really well in this tournament. But today they have made mistakes. The, the biggest mistake they've made is losing this ball in contact, in vital positions on the field. Andy Moore, Rodri Jones, Scott Gibbs, Geraint Lewis. Rodri Jones again. Penalty to Swansea, and they haven't had that many in the game. Wasps not back to ten. It's only Swansea's eighth penalty, in fact, throughout the match, compared to the Wasps 14. Darren Jenkins, Paul Moriarty, held by Simon Shaw. Rodri Jones again whips it out to Harwell Thomas. Scott Gibbs held, what a tackle from Joe Worsley, Matthew Robinson with space. Well, 
I tell you what, there's still uh, some going on on the field because Joe Worsley took a boot in the face from Scott Gibbs on the floor there. Gibbs is, is lucky to get away with that. That's Robinson. Uno. One. Black Bear. It's been a frustrating afternoon for Swansea, especially their skipper, 